It's the Frontline Theater. Frontline Theater presents a riotous, hectic comedy, Ham for Sale, starring Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, Michael Curtiz, and one of America's top funny men, Jack Benny. As an additional treat, there's the intermission music of Russ Morgan and his orchestra. Welcome to Frontline Theater, men. This is your theater, and every performance is presented for you, the men and women of the United Nations. Our play, Ham for Sale, features four of Hollywood's outstanding personalities, Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, Michael Curtiz, and Jack Benny. Strictly speaking, our play is not really a play at all, but rather Jack Benny's efforts to get into one. On hand to acquaint you with the details is one of filmdom's most lovable character actors, Mr. Gene Herschel. Now the house lights dim and the curtain rises, and here to give you the lowdown on Ham for Sale is Mr. Herschel. Thank you and good evening. For our guests on tonight's program, we have Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, and your actor Michael Curtis, three of Filmdom's outstanding personalities who will offer... Uh, just a minute, Gene. I thought Jack Benny was supposed to be one of the guests here tonight. Jack Benny? Yes. Well, he was, but he got a little temperamental, so we, uh... Well, so he's just not here tonight. But, Gene, Jack told uh, me no, that... Truman. Let me explain the whole thing. When Jack found out that uh, Michael Curtis was going to direct Barbara Stanwyck and Basil Rathbone in a dramatic sketch, right away he wanted to muzzle in on it. Oh. So he called me up and tried to sell himself. <clears throat> I had a terrible time getting rid of him, and this is exactly what happened. Hello? Uh, hello, this is Jack Benny speaking. I'd like to talk to Mr. Holt. Who? Mr. Holt. Mr. Hirsch Holt. <laughs> Is, uh, is he in? Oh, you must mean Gene Herschold. This is he speaking. Oh, oh, Gene Herschold, yes, Didn't yes. Did explain to you that the play is all set and the cast is complete? Well, yes. Uh, yes I'll they... tell you what, I'll tell you. Uh, let's make it some other night. Well, now, now, look, don't give me that some other time stuff, and you don't have to beat around the bush either. Look, Mr. Herschold, if you don't want me to be on this show, just say so. And all I want is a simple answer. Yes or no? No. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> And I can tell from your attitude, Mr. Herschel, that this is a personal matter. I mean, what have you got against me? I haven't got anything against you, Jack, but you're a comedian. And frankly, I don't think you have enough dramatic ability to play the lead opposite Miss Stanwyck. What do you mean I can't be dramatic? Did you ever see me when I was worried? <laughs> Why, I'm, I'm only 32 and I've got gray hair. You're only what? I've got gray hair, can't you hear? Now, look, who can I speak to uh, besides you about this? Huh? Well, Jack, there's only one suggestion I can make. Get in touch with Mr. Michael Curtis. He is going to direct the play we are doing on this program. Michael Curtis, the director who won the Academy Award? Oh, boy. And if it's all right with Curtis, it's all right with me. Well, thanks, thanks. I'll call him right away. By the way, what's Mr. Curtis's telephone number? Uh, I'll rake 8900. Uh, wait till I write that down. I'll rake... Eight. Hey, wait a minute. That's the number you call to get the right time. Now, look, Mr. Herschel. Hello? Hello? Operator, I was cut off. You weren't cut off, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fine president for the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Got a good mind to run against him. <laughs> now, let's see. Where can I get Curtez's number? Well, here's the telephone book right here. Let's see, there's C, 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 Cur, Curry. I hate curry. <laughs> Why do they have to take chicken and spoil it with that stuff? Kurt, Curtsy, Curtez. Oh, there it is. No, no, I, no, miss. I want to talk to Mr. Curtez personally. Who's calling, please? Uh, Benny, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Is it about insurance or something? No. No, it's about acting. Oh. Please get Mr. Curtez on the phone. Yes, sir. Insurance yet. Haven't sold a policy since Warner Brothers picked up my option. <laughs> In the first place... Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Curtez. Uh, this is Jack. Jack who? <laughs> oh, 
oh, pardon me, Benny. Jack Benny. Remember, we met once at a party at Marlene Dietrich's house. Uh, Marlene Dietrich? You know, the girl with the legs. All girls I know have legs. <laughs> That's right, they do. They do. Now, look, Mr. Cortez. Oh, Jack Benny. Oh, oh. Are you the radio comedian? And violinist. Now, here's... <laughs> Now, here's the, uh, here's the situation, Mr. Cortez. I just spoke to Gene Herschel, president of the Motion Picture Relief Fund, whom, incidentally, I'm running against next year. And um, Mr. Holt, uh, Mr. Herschel said, if it was um, okay with you, I could be on the program. Ah, but I'm not directing a comedy, Mr. Benny. It's going to be a very serious, dramatic play. Well, gee, I can do drama. I made a picture once called The Meanest Man in the World. I didn't get one laugh in it. Now, uh, now what do you say? I'm glad I missed it. <laughs> Look, I don't mean that. I'm talking about acting with Barbara Stanley. Uh, now, Mr. Benny, I'm trying to explain it to the best of my ability. You are a comedian, and it's impossible to convince anyone that you are a lover. Well, I'm too much of a gentleman to mention names, but, um... <laughs> But there are a couple of girls at the Florentine Gardens that'll give you an argument about that, brother. <laughs> now, just, Mr. Wait, Cur- what? Just, just wait a moment, Jack. He says, Basil Radburn is all set to play opposite Barbara Stanwyck. And he says, there is nothing I can do about it. Basil Rathbone? Well, why can't we make it a triangle? Why can't he be her husband and I her lover? Because I am a director and not a miracle man. <laughs> Well, I'll take care of the miracles. <laughs> it, uh, it can be worked out, don't worry. Well, all right. I tell you what, Jack. I'm a very busy now. I suggest you call Miss Stanwyck. And if it's all right with her, it's okay with me. Thank you. I'll do that. Oh, what's Miss Stanwyck's telephone number? Oh, I think it's Crestview 67071. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Joe's Fish Market. (laughs) What? Come on, buddy, I haven't got all day. Is Barbara there? Barracuda, 42 cents a pop. Barracuda? Who is this, anyway? This is Joe's Fish Market. Oh, I don't want any fish. I've got What's to... wrong with fish? Nothing, nothing. Boats going out every day, taking a chance with submarines, and you don't like the fish they bring back. <laughs> Look, it isn't that. I just happen to call... It's guys like you that are eating up all the cows in this country. <laughs> I never ate a cow in my life. I got the wrong number. Goodbye. Hmm. Cortez gave me the wrong number purposely. Oh, well, I'll get Barbara in the phone book, and I won't take any chances this time. I'll trap her into letting me play the part. Now, let's see. I'll disguise my voice. Let's see. Stanwyck. S. S. T. Stan. Standish. Stank. I used to go with a girl named Stank. Alga Stank. Stanley. Stanton. There it is. Stanwyck. I'd like to speak to Miss Stanwyck, please. This is Miss Stanwyck speaking. Oh, my name is Sivbucket. Roscoe J. Sivbucket. I'm with the Radio Gallup poll. Tell me, Miss Stanwyck, who do you listen to on Sundays? Amy McPherson. I see. Well, Miss Stanwyck, do you ever listen to Jack Benny? Oh, yes. I never miss him. He's wonderful. Well, that's nice to know. Uh, tell me, Miss Stanwyck, would you be interested in doing a play that is a love scene... With Mr. Benny on the radio? On the radio, back porch, or Davenport, no. Hmm. But you just said he was wonderful. I don't mind listening to him, but I won't have him pawing me. Who said I was going to paw you? Just a minute. Who is this, anyway? It ain't Joe's Fish Market. (laughs) Now, look, Barbara... Why, Jack Benny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I was only kidding. Have you any objection to my playing the part of your husband in the sketch? 
But I understood Basil Rathbone was playing the part. Well, he's scheduled to uh, tentatively. But if you want me, all you've got to do is speak up. <laughs> I said all you've got to do is speak up. Barbara, are you there? Yes. Oh, oh. Well, I, I, I wish you'd... I wish you'd think this over, Barbara. But, Jack, this part doesn't fit you. It, it has to be someone with a lot of sex appeal. Well, I have sex appeal. Gee, I, I was thrown out of the Palladium three times for dancing too close. <laughs> dancing too close? You were just tired and hanging on. Well, no wonder the way I jitterbug. Come on, what do you say, Barbara? How about me doing the play with you instead of Rathbone? Well, I really have nothing to do with it, Jack. Why don't you call up Gene Herschel? I did call him, and it's up to you. Now, look, Barbara, I've got another idea. Why can't Will I... you please deposit five cents for an additional three minutes? Whoop. Three minutes already? Just a second. Would you mind dropping a nickel in, Barbara? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't have a payphone in my house. Oh, well, that's right. What's the matter with me? Do I get that nickel or do I have to cut you off? Now, don't get excited. Here, I found one. There. Hmm. No more three minutes than the man on the moon. It doesn't seem like we've been talking for three minutes, does it, Barbara? You ought to be on this end. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Well, come to the point, Barbara. Look at Here's what I was going to ask you. When do you start rehearsing the play? Tomorrow night at my house, but I don't think you ought at to... At your house, eh? What time? Eight o'clock, but really, Jack, I don't think Eight you... Eight o'clock. Well, thanks, Barbara. See you tomorrow night. I'll read the part, and Basil Rathbone will read the part, and may the best man win. That's fair enough, isn't it? I'll say it is. Swell. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Barbara, shall I come for dinner? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, well, some other time. And so ends Act One of our farce, Ham for Sale, starring Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, Michael Curtiz, and Jack Benny. And now during intermission, here's Russ Morgan and his music makers to give you some of these days. to Russ Morgan. But now to Act Two of Ham for Sale with Jack Benny, Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, and Michael Curtiz. As the curtain rises, we find that the unsuspecting Miss Stanwyck has invited Mr. Benny over to her home. Mr. Benny bursts into Miss Stanwyck's residence, and the butler takes it from there. Right this way, Mr. Benny. I'll show you into the drawing room. Thank you, thanks. Mr. Rathbone is here already. Oh, he is. One of those anxious guys, eh? <laughs> Say, this is a lovely home. May I take your umbrella, Mr. Benny? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. I should have left it out in the hall. You know, it looked like rain when I started out. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Rathbone, I'm Jack Benny, the movie star. Now, how do you do? <laughs> now, how do you do? So the two rivals meet, eh? Rivals? Yes. Well, perhaps I should let Barbara tell you, but it looks like, well, I'm taking your place. You're taking my place? Well, it's this way. At rehearsal tonight, you and I are both going to read the part, and of course, the best man will win. The best man? Yes. Mr. Benny, when only two people are involved in a statement, the comparative is used. You don't say the best man will win, you say the better man will win. Oh. <laughs> now, um, if three or more people are involved, then the word best is the correct adjective. I see. And so before we compete for the part in this play, Mr. Benny, perhaps it would be as well if you first learned how to speak English. <laughs> well, for your information, Mr. Rathbone, I went to Waukegan High School four years and I excelled in English. 
In fact, I got 99 every single term. Now, ain't that interesting? <laughs> now, cut that out! <laughs> and getting back to the Screen Guild show, the way the script is written now, you play the part of Miss Tanwick's husband, is that correct? That is correct and final. Well, that remains to be seen. Hmm. I've heard of sore losers in my life, but this guy takes the case, you know. And Step right in here, Mr. Cattell. Miss Stamick will be with you shortly. Uh, thank you. Oh, hello, Basil. Hello. Michael, boy, how are you? Fine, fine. Oh, hello, Mr. Cortez. What are you doing here? Well, I just thought I'd drop around to see if I... Uh, could... Now, listen, Mike. I don't know what this is all about, but I demand an explanation. Look, Mr. Rathbone. Explanation? That's what I want. Look, Mr. Curtis. I was under the impression that I was to appear opposite Miss Stanwyck. Look, Mr. Rathbone. Of course you were. Look, Mr. Curtis. <laughs> then what is this all about? Look, Mr. Now, look! <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, when I spoke to you on the telephone, I thought I made perfectly clear Good that evening, I... Good evening, everybody. Well, Good here's evening. Barbara. Hello. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Well, here we are. Just set the coffee down here, Richard. Yes, madam. Give me just, Mr. Curtis. Uh, no, thank you. Coffee, Basil? Yes, please. I'll have some, too. Here you are, Jack. Uh, thanks. <laughs> oh, Barbara, this is the better coffee I ever tasted. <laughs> Mr. Benny, the word is best. There are only two of us drinking it. <laughs> now make up your mind. Well, we're all here, so let's get started with the rehearsal. Uh, just one moment. Oh, Mike, um, let's get this settled before, uh, for Mr. Benny's benefit, shall we? Is he or is he not replacing me in the play? Certainly not. That's ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. Why, it's absurd. You stay out of this. Well, please. <laughs> please stop. Stop all this bickering. Now, Jack... <laughs> If you would like to watch the rehearsal, just take a chair over there and be quiet. Yes, sir. Hmm. Oh, Barbara, is it all right if I have some of these walnuts here? Go right ahead. Help yourself, Jack. Thanks. Mmm, big one. Jumbos. Mmm. <laughs> hmm. Now, Barbara, you too, Basil. If you both turn to the page 12 on this script, we'll proceed. Boy, these nuts are good. <laughs> You are now, good. Now, Barbara, you are a wealthy society girl who is married to a New York stockbroker. That's who you are, Basil. <laughs> but uh, he's not love with you, Barbara, as the French say, is a marriage of convenience. That was a tough one. <laughs> Mr. Benny! <laughs> Will you stop eating those nuts? Barbara said I could. <laughs> Anyway, Mr. Cortez, I don't want to sit around here like a bump on a log. If I can't have the lead in the play, isn't there something I can do? All right. If it makes you happy, you can play the part of a butler. A butler? Okay. All right. Here's your script. Thanks. Now, remember, Barbara, you are the wife. Basil, you are the husband who doesn't understand her. And Jack? I'm the butler whom Barbara really loves. <laughs> you are the butler. That's all. Okay, okay. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> All right, Barbara. Now, you start the same. Remember, your husband is two hours late for dinner, and you are a nervous wreck. I understand. Go ahead. Call for your butler. Yes. <clears throat> oh, Smedley. Smedley. Yes, madame. Smedley, yes. <laughs> uh, what is it, madame? Are you sure my husband hasn't phoned? Uh, no, madame. That's strange. He said he'd be back at... What time is it, Smedley? It's half past eight. <laughs> Shall I serve dinner, madame? Oh, no, no, Smedley. I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. What's playing in the village? George Washington Slept Here, starring Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> that is not in the script. Read the line that I've written, please. Well, it doesn't hurt to give my picture a plug. It doesn't change the plot any, does it? For heaven's sake. Read it on the way it's written. All right, all right. <laughs> Between Hirschhold and you, I don't understand anything. <laughs> All right, now give me, uh, give me that again, will you, Barbara? Okay. No, Smedley, I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. What's playing in the village? Casablanca. How's that? <laughs> 
Elizabeth Vesta. And George Washington slept here. It's a double feature. <laughs> yeah. Jack, please. All right, I'll start over again. Shall I serve dinner, madame? No, Smedley, I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. Is one of my pictures playing in the village? <laughs> There can't be three features on one bill. You know. Shut up! All right, all right. Now, Barbara, at this point, the husband entered the room. I'm ready, Mike. Oh, Mr. Cortez, let me ask you something. When Basil comes in, or Basil... By the way, how do you pronounce that? Basil or Basil? Mr. Rathbone. <laughs> oh, well, when Mr. Rathbone comes in... Just read the line, Jack. I handle the rest. All right, all right. Ready? Director. Ready, ready Basil? Board, yeah. Make your entrance, please. <clears throat> right. Oh, good evening, darling. So sorry I'm late. Oh, Ronald, you're always late and you're always sorry. It's been like this for months. What has come between us? If I only knew, maybe we could work things out. No, it's nothing, my dear. It's just that I've been so busy lately at the office. Let's forget it. Uh, dinner is served. Oh, pardon me. I came in too soon. <laughs> Ronald, we must come to some understanding. This can't go on forever. Gwen, let's be adult about the whole thing, shall we? Every night it's the same argument, this constant nagging, nagging, nagging. I tell you, I've been working at the office. But I phoned your office and they said you left at two this afternoon. Well, I had business at the bank. Besides, I, I forgot where I parked my car. Fine Sherlock Holmes can't even find his car. <laughs> Jack, stop interrupting. <laughs> tell you, Barbara. It's no use, Ronald. I know you're lying. Look at you. Everything you say, everything you do gives you away. Now, Ben, please. What's that on your collar? Is it lipstick? It ain't ketchup. <laughs> Jack, please! Well, I don't want to stand around here like a dope. You've got the right line now. Faith. Oh, yes. A uh, big pardon, madame. Uh, dinner is served. Jack, don't use such a thick accent. <laughs> Well, now I've heard everything. <laughs> to talk yet. Dinner is served. Ah, dinner. Come along, Gwen. We're not having dinner, Ronald. Not until we reach a definite understanding. But I'm hungry. Oh, Ronald, I can't go through another day of this uncertainty. I must know. Do you love me or not? Of course I love you. You're lying, Ronald. Lying. Very well, then I'm lying. Gee. You might as well know the truth, Gwen. I've never loved you. Never. Guy must be nuts. And if you went so... <laughs> If you weren't so stupid, you'd have known it a long time ago. Ronald! Ronald! What are you saying? Gee whiz. I married you for your money, that's all. Everybody else knows it. And if you weren't such a silly, blind little fool, you'd have realized it yourself. Oh, stop, Ronald! Well, stop! Well, now that you know how things stand between us, the sooner you divorce me, the happier I'll be. No, no, I will never divorce you, Ronald. I couldn't live without you. I couldn't. I couldn't. Tears, tears, woman's tears. Oh, stop the dramatic. Ronald! I'm moving to my club. Medley, pack my clothes. I wouldn't touch your dirty... <laughs> you rat! Jack, Jack, stick to your lines. You are the butt. I don't care. Continue, Basil. Well, goodbye, Gwen. I'm going to my club. Our attorneys can get together tomorrow. Don't go, Ronald. Please don't go. Oh, stop hanging on to me. But I won't give you up. I won't. I won't. Stop it, I say. Stop it. Let go of me. No, no. Don't take that. Oh! That's the last straw. Tear off your coat, Ratbone. Put Jack. <laughs> Jack, this is only a play. Play nothing. Put up those dukes, Basil. Jack, if you don't behave yourself, you can't be in the play. The heck with the play. If you think I'm going to stand by and see this cad strike the woman I love. The woman you love? Yes, Barbara. You might as well know it now. I've been crazy about you for years. But Jack, please. I don't care who knows it. I don't care if the whole world knows it. I love you, Barbara, as I've never loved before. I know you will never feel the same way about me, so I'll walk out of your life forever. But before I go, kiss me. <laughs> Call him the Waukegan Wolf. And 
so down comes the curtain on Ham for Sale, the riotous radio farce starring Jack Benny, Gene Herschel, Barbara Stanwyck, Basil Rathbone, and Michael Curtis. Next week, Frontline Theater will again present another play, and each week thereafter will offer your favorite stars all the great names of stage, screen, and radio in the dramas, musicals, mysteries, comedies, and romances you want to hear. If you have any special play you want enacted, just drop a line.